transforming your life through hypnotherapy has never been easier. With the help of your host, Julie, from CoachingHypnosis.net, in these power-packed minisodes, you're sure to find yourself engaging in more positive behaviors around both your physical and mental health. Here's your host, Julie. G'day, it's Julie from CoachingHypnosis.net, and you deserve to know the one way to toughen your tolerance in 2023, because people have had enough of being patient and feeling like they are a few stubby short of a six-pack at the same time, and I'm not a therapist or psychotherapist, but this is my 10th year as a clinical hypnotherapist in strategic psychotherapy. I currently help my clients online. They change their life without changing out of their pyjamas. And I can only imagine someone like you has the patience of a saint, has tolerated the intolerable, and you deserve to feel friggin' fabulous all the time because you really are fabulous, even if you don't think so. And as you know, the quality of people's decisions affect the quality of their life if they decide someone stepped on their toe on purpose or by accident, the quality of their day changes. And while I have no psychic powers, I can only guess that someone like yourself has the skills to care for yourself. You know how to eat good, exercise, go for a walk, take an abundance of fresh air, sunshine. But have you considered your genes have a tolerance threshold? And when you push them over the edge, you set yourself up for undesirable gene expression. And as you know, tolerance is not by chance. It often comes from conscious effort because certain areas of our brain are hardwired, whereas other parts have more plasticity and can be influenced by learning and experience. There are certain parts of your genetics that are more easily turned on, while other genetic sequences somewhat are hardwired, which means they're harder to activate because they've been around longer in your genetic history. At least that's what science is saying right now according to Dr. Joe Dispenza. Pretend for a moment you have the world's greatest diet. You've eaten perfectly every single day of your life, but you've decided to stay in the toxic state of anger for two years and you keep activating the same chemical cocktail of anger, but your body keeps making the same proteins. Our body cannot adapt to the repeated demands of anger, so it begins to break down and 10 or 20 years later, your genes begin to wear out. They start making cheaper proteins made from the leftovers of anger. Now you're headed for an undesirable genetic destiny or sickness. The good news is an elevated state of mind expresses healthier genes. In Japan, a study wanted to find out if one's mental state could influence disease. Two groups of patients were all insulin dependent. They all had type 2 diabetes. One set of patients watched a comedy show for an hour while the control group watched a boring lecture. They all ate a meal and their sugar levels were measured. Those who enjoyed the comedy, their blood sugar levels rose to a normal amount. Those who watched the lecture, their blood sugar levels sat just below the danger zone. They examined the gene sequences of the individuals who watched the comedy and discovered they had altered 23 different gene expressions just by laughing at the comedy show they had seen. Their elevated state of mind triggered their brains to send new signals to their cells, which turned on those genetic variations that their bodies naturally began to regulate the genes responsible for processing the blood sugar. And as a wise man once said, if you laugh a lot when you get older, all of your wrinkles will be in the right places. In fact, if you ever become an Australian citizen, you need tolerance in order to be a good citizen. Because being a good citizen means you agree to a fair go for all that embraces mutual respect tolerance, compassion for those in need, so you can go flat out with tolerance. And to quote Michael Yapko from his book, Process Oriented Hypnosis, the quality of your decisions affects the quality of your life. And things you've learned throughout your life have made some sense and no one escapes socialization. You grew up around people, parents, teachers, relatives and friends. They all shared their values through the things they said. You started learning very early in life what was deemed important and what was valuable to 
to pursue. Socialization is a very powerful force. Consider how much it shapes our perceptions of what we think we know, how we think we should act. And at some point in your development, as you grow more experienced and more aware, things you thought were true weren't. And in ways you thought you should act, you shouldn't. Because situations change and new responses are needed and you start to become of your ability to choose which beliefs to hold on to and which are still relevant and which ones to discard if they're no longer relevant or if they really were relevant at all. You take charge of yourself as you reevaluate as to which to affirm and which things to dismiss because they don't work for you anymore. Socialization can blur important distinctions and when you learn from significant others what's important to them, what they believe, what they should be important to you. You learn a style of responding to life experiences. For example, if you have parents who are perfectionistic, who are quick to point out and criticise even the small meaningless mistakes or less than perfect grades in school, but rarely, if ever, compliment what you've done well, then you learn to focus your attention on what's wrong in almost every life situation and rarely, if ever, on what's right. You'll be quick to notice your inevitable flaws simply because you're human, but not acknowledge your strengths and such people don't learn to just distinguish between unrealistic perfectionism and a realistic sense of what's plenty good enough. Or if you grew up always learning to put others' needs and wishes ahead of your own and told that your worth only comes from what you do for others, then you might learn to be generous and sensitive. But you don't learn how to do caring things for yourself because it seems self-indulgent and even selfish. Such people don't learn to distinguish to learn from selfishness and taking care of self. And there are things that you learned growing up, the way you were taught to be and values you were taught to live by and what was so deeply ingrained in you that you hadn't realised before. Perhaps there is an important distinction between knowing something and realising something. And it turns out there are multiple ways you can increase your tolerance skills when you're stressed, like focus on slowing down your breathing, exercise, pray, learn muscle relaxation techniques, try something that evokes the opposite reaction, distract yourself, accept how you feel and move on. Here is the one tougher your tolerance technique. I would if I could. Now as you begin to listen to my voice, I would like you to close your eyes, relax, let go. Let my voice make all the effort necessary as you relax for the next few minutes. You let it be a pleasure. Begin now to enjoy the feeling of being able to choose, to relax, to let go, to be able to go inside and turn the world off. As you relax for the next few minutes, you are going to learn to enjoy gradually, effortlessly and settle into a feeling called hypnotic sleep. It is your ability your mind already has inside to relax, to settle into a neutral state when you listen today. Maybe you had a dream in mind, something you wanted to make happen in your life. I would if I could has an ending now. The words that will go through your mind many times a day comfortably is I can as you believe it, you begin to feel the pride and tolerance that makes it all happen. You begin to feel comfortable with your past. And your past is a very valuable piece of education, very important piece of experience that has use for you. So as you relax and you let your body go, you refuse to build your life on any form of guilt. It has no value to you. What you did in the past was the best you could tolerate at the time the very best effort you are able to make. The only reason you know this is because you are better now. You're better now because you see yesterday through today's eyes. You have matured and grown. You understand that there's no value in guilt and the education and experience has value for you. Your childhood programming and experiences were controlled by circumstantial accidents. You are going to keep the pieces you like and agree with you. But any feelings, any doubts or fears that might live inside you Anything you don't like about your feelings and attitudes, those things are not yours, they happen to you by accident. You are not going to take them. You are going to reject them over and done and gone. Now you are going to make each day happen your way. You're going to mature into that attitude easily. New experiences are going to help you mature into that kind of person that you want to be. 
you honestly believe that you are all you need to be to be successful and you can have all the things you need to complement you to succeed. You feel this now and increasingly every day. For now, relax, experience that attitude. For you are doing right now is choosing to turn off the world, go inside, to relax, to feel a sense of control better than you've ever had. That is a reality. Keep it. Use it. You are maturing and you find great pride in that emotion. You begin to realize the final choice as how you are going to feel in any situation is always yours. No one can make it for you. No one does anything to you. It's your choice whether you're going to allow them to control your life in any way, shape or form. It's your choice, not theirs. You are a unique person. You are one of a kind. You will find that people may do what you do, but no one can do anything. No one can ever do it the way you do things. You are and have been very special at birth and there's no reason in the world to doubt your individual value. At any point in your life, enjoy that feeling. It's real. Failure does not exist. There's no such thing. Only your degree of success ever needs to be measured by you. Even your most pitiful degree of success is a seed for the future. It will grow with any kind of attention at all that you need given. Fear is always fantasy. There's a game. So only is success. You alone are not going to choose which one of these in the world will see as being real. Relax now. Remember that if I could, I would is a dream and a very good dream. If I could is the search for a plan or a way to make it happen for yourself. I can is the harmony of all feelings and thoughts and make your life happen on purpose successfully. And when you hear my voice, relax, let it feel good, believe it. Don't waste my time or yours. Make it happen. Make your life happen on purpose. Each and every suggestion has registered deep within your subconscious mind. On the count of five, your eyes will open, sparkling clear, mind feeling alert. One, two, three, four, five. Welcome back. You're perfect, just as you are. So what if you thought about tolerance differently? And what if you didn't? The choice is yours. 